morning. What's up, man? Yo, dude. Uh, elbows. elbows. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it cool. that way. Okay, fine. Hey, we just wanted to have a conversation this morning. I know some of you will probably be watching this right now live, um, and some of you will probably watch the replay later. Justin and I wanted to have a conversation this morning. We had a, a meeting planned for this morning uh, just to talk about the week, what's coming up, that type of stuff. And we were going to have a conversation about what does it look like to reopen and um, so the last couple of weeks as we had that conversation, we just decided, hey, let's just go live instead. Let's just bring, yeah. you know, let's just bring the people into this conversation. So that's what we're doing. This isn't a production at all. We happen to be seated where we sit for teaching on Sunday. It was just convenient to yeah. do it that way. It's already set up and um, we're used to seeing each other this way. Yeah, so our goal this morning is this is kind of a family gathering. We know we have other people maybe who hopefully can be influenced by this a little bit. We've been uh, putting some thoughts down the last couple of weeks about where are we as a church. And so we want to talk about three things this morning. We want to talk about reacting. And so with all the kind of the news, the headlines, the voices, the noise, good and bad noise, we want to sift through that a little bit. We want to take some of those those ideas of things that we've all received and we want to just talk about that a little bit and how do we one respond to that two how do you take your responses from what you received and how do you make a plan to kind of this this season that's so fluid and changing how do you make a plan to reopen but then three, we don't want to just reopen. So reopen to us is, hey, let's get back to normal. Man, we're going, hey, we've seen God move in ways that we didn't expect in this season. Mm -hmm. So let's reemerge. So reemerge to us is very different. It's not just getting back to like neutral. It's like, you know, busting out of the surface and moving into something that, that um, you know, a mission, uh, a vision that we believe God has kind of opened up for us in this season. So, yeah, it's, it's like metamorphosis instead of I just love changing, that, man. right? Which metamorphosis yeah. would be that something about us has shifted, changed, yeah. been remolded into a new expression. And I think it would be... Um, uh, naive of us to believe that God hasn't done something in this season, right? So Absolutely. I think he's changed the shape of us, the change, changing the shape of things. And so we want to yeah. keep our eyes open to that. And when you say that, when we realize what God has done, we've heard from many of you in the Newcom family going, man, um, we're seeing what God can do through us as a community, the reach that we can have. And we're not just talking about outreach, because outreach to me is when you go into the community and you try to then bring them into your building, into your story. Yeah. But I think we're, as a church, we're in a, a season that we need to step into inreach, where you actually enter into their story. Yeah. And that's what we see Jesus actually doing. It wasn't outreach, it was inreach. Mm -hmm. Him going into, into their story, us going into the story of the community, and bring in Jesus to the 760, right? Okay. Bring in Jesus to Main Street. Bring in Jesus, you know, to to the world. And we've we've seen yeah. God do that in this season. So, again, the, the three things that we're going to kind of set up these guardrails for us are reacting, reopening, and then reemerging. We're going to use those three things. But what we want to do is first we want to set up some guardrails. One. We're going to probably make this pretty short. We can't make this over 30 minutes because as a reality, there's digital fatigue that will happen, that will set in. You don't need to be watching this for more than 30 minutes. It's just, it's too much of, of us probably. Yeah, but it's like idea influx or oversaturation. Yeah, too much, man. Yeah, so, we'll start to lose ourselves and you in the process. So we're going to try to go for another like 20, 25 minutes here. So it'll be pretty fast. The thing we do ask though is that we're going to be honest, we're going to be open, and we're going to be transparent. So those three things. With that, please watch this in its entirety. Yeah. Because it'd be easy to watch or to skip to a specific section of it and miss the context of what we're saying because, and, and so please, please do that. We don't want things ta taken out of context. Um, we want it to be in the context that we put it in. Yeah, this isn't the news. So we don't just yeah. grab a, a snippet of something, share it, and then pass it on to our friends. We we are sharing from our hearts. I mean, this is us just being Justin and Derek. We want to love you. Um, we feel like it's our responsibility, but it's also a privilege to live in community and honesty and sincerity with yeah. you. And so we're going to be sharing from 
that place. Yeah. Um, and so use it for what the intention is behind it, just to love, care, shepherd, walk with, help bring clarity, and share where we don't have clarity on some things yet, but give direction. Yeah. And so we want to set up some guardrails. It's always important for conversations like this to set up guardrails. And guardrails are help us align in how we move forward. So we're saying, here's what's inside the guardrails. Here's what's in, in bounds. And here's what's out of bounds. So let's talk about real quick what this conversation is. So what's in the guardrails and then what it isn't. I would say, first of all, um, this is not a political conversation, right? No. So we want to remove that completely. And I would say for some of us, um, we may need to return to that truth and that reality over and over as you listen to this, because this is not motivated by politics. Our decisions and us reacting is not motivated by, by politics. And so um, I think for a lot of us, um, what can happen is that we frame this conversation as um, this is how I vote or this is how I I don't vote. And so simply put, this conversation, we've seen it become a partisan conversation. It's been framed within what party do you belong to? So we're seeing um, the same story, and this is nothing new to anyone, the same story though, you know, projected in two different uh, media outlets, depending on one is more liberal or one is more conservative. And as an example of that, um, what we're really going to be talking about when it comes to reopening is that there's churches who have said, hey, we're going we're gonna to defy the government. Yeah. And we're, we're going to open on May 31st. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a few moments. But what has happened is if you read an outlet like, say, CNN, it says something like um, 500 pastors or 500 churches are potentially opening. But then you read a conservative um, media outlet like One America News Network, and it says 3,000 churches in just California are opening. And so you get this momentum pushing of like, oh, it's 3,000, depending on what, yeah. what you're, you're reading. So we don't want this to be a partisan or bipartisan or even a political conversation. We want this to be a Jesus conversation, right? Yeah, that's the thing. And we want you to be able to sense and understand what God might be saying in the process, um, in the midst of the wind and the waves of the flood of information. And it's so easy for our yeah. motives to get steered by those pieces of information. And we think we're hearing from God, which you may be. I can't disqualify what's going on in yeah. your heart. But how much are you responding because now you feel like you have to because you just heard some information? We have to whittle ourselves back into just being us and the Father and figure out what that means. Part of us having um, uh, a lot of clarity on how we share this morning is, um, Derek, I feel like you should just drive this whole conversation and as I feel cool. I hear things, cool. I'll jump in. I wanna make sure that yeah. um, we don't stop and dwell for too long, too many places, but we get what we need to say out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to walking through this. Yeah, so I'd say the, the second piece then for me yeah. in, the, in the guardrails is, um, you know, as a leader, and I think a lot of you understand this, it is difficult to lead people when you're leading different generations, people who have different opinions, um, and you have people who have different views then on what matters and maybe what doesn't matter or different levels in life of what they want to invest in or what they want to go after, people who have different convictions. So we're trying to lead people who have different convictions, different opinions, different point of views, and we're trying to lead us together in the same direction to the same place. That is a difficult undertaking because you might have a different opinion than, than we do, but we want to move together, and that's our heart. And so with this, um, we want to move in being wise yeah. all through it. That's the thread, wise, humble, and biblical. What does Jesus say about this? What do the scriptures say about this? What does it look like to be a Jesus person right now in our, our season? So here's where the conversation started. Let me just jump in. We're in week nine, right? I think week nine. Yeah, it's week nine. Of, of, you know, 
really being on quarantine, being at home. And there's some conversation that just started about this phasing in process. And in the state of California, there was four steps that our governor really released. And what happened in, in those four stages is that in, in phase two or step two of the phasing in plan, it said that, that some stores, restaurants, et cetera, um, who were deemed as non-essential originally can reopen and have people begin to come in. Well, what has happened is a lot of churches have said, wait, we are essential, more essential than restaurants, um, or even, to be honest, um, there's been a lot of conversation about marijuana dispensaries that were more essential than them. And so why can they open in phase two and churches have been put in phase three? And so that is what has happened um, really this kind of this, this past week or so. And so the state government said that's how we're going to phase in. Churches, in order to gather face-to-face in your brick and stucco buildings, you have to be in uh, step three of a step, a four-step process. And so um, there was some pushback against the state of California. But then what we had happen is that a federal judge stepped in. Yeah and looked at the decision that was made and actually said, now at a federal level, so um, our country saying, no, for the state of California, the governor did not go against the Constitution. He's not breaking the, the liberties of religion or the religious freedoms that churches have. So we have our city, for us it's the city of Vista, saying that. We have state saying that, and then the federal government stepped in. And so um, these, this is what we heard. And now let's talk about the first thing, about reacting. So that's kind of the thing. The state has said this, the city has said this, and also the federal government has said, you are in step three of a step four process or phasing in plan. And so churches are pushing back. So here's some of the reactions that we have we have heard from this. There's a lot of emotion attached to it. Yeah, absolutely. When you find out that your religious <laughs> establishment is yeah. prioritized somewhere that you didn't get to choose, yeah. that's frustrating. It, yeah. it evokes a lot of emotion. Emotions, and so I think this is where some of these statements we're going to share come from. Yeah. And so I was, real quick, a, a fast story. When I was 25 years old, working as a youth pastor, um, the lead pastor I worked for, an incredible guy, he said to me one time, he said, Derek, um, you need to uh, pick your battles or choose your battles, the word. You need to choose your battles. And being 25 years old, Um, or as at least Derek being 25 years old, I said to him, I do choose my battles. I choose every single one of them. No. So as rebellious as I can be, here's the thing. In life, we need need to figure out what what battles we choose Mm -hmm. and what battles we do not choose. That's right. And that as you get older, as I got older, almost 40, Almost 40, going to be 40 this year, a yeah. few months. You're going to be there two weeks before me. I realize the wisdom in that, right? I realize the humility in that, that you can't fight all of it. So how do you invest in the things that are most important? Where do you want to put your energy and your resources at, right? That's it. And so um, here's some of the reactions that, that we've, we've heard. If you want to talk about just some of the stuff that we were talking about, in some of our meetings about some of the reactions yeah, that sure, we've heard sure. come well, out. Yeah. So Derek and I exist in a unique community called yeah. the pastoral community. And um, here's some of the things we've heard. And they're honestly all over the map. Yeah. Um, you know, one is like, we're like Paul in prison. And I'm thinking to myself, like, well, I don't know. Paul's saying a lot in prison. But I don't want to respond to all of these. But yeah. we're like Paul in prison. So there's almost this uprising thing. Like, we need God's intervention to do And, and just us. to be clear, these are the reactions. From that, the pastoral community. Yep. Yeah. And the second is, like, this is like Acts 2, where the Holy Spirit is filling, filling the church. And we're in an upper room. And God's inf- infiltrating our space and changing us in our space. And then even things like, my house is a house of prayer. All of those are biblical. Yeah. But the reason why we're looking at those is always really important. And then within the church community, there's been a lot of other reactions too. So not just the pastoral yeah. community that Derek and I connect with, but then the church community, which is the community of all the churches in the areas. Yeah, and, and I, I love those scriptures. So Acts 2, and then that's Matthew 21, where Jesus says, my house is a house of prayer. Sure. But it's interesting that, you know, in Acts 2, obviously they're in a house. 
they weren't at a church campus gathering. So yeah. I don't know if that's, you know, the best scripture for that. And we're not pointing fingers. We're trying to figure this out. Yeah. We're, we're wrestling through these responses as well. Um, and then my house is a house of prayer. Jesus was talking about the temple. The temple doesn't yep. exist anymore in that, in that context. And so out of that context, we are now the sanctuary, right? We are now, we are now the temple. We are the ones that inhabit, you know, the, the presence of, of the, the living God, of the, the spirit. So um, for us, we're like, we don't know if those are the scriptures we want to guide us fully into making a decision. So um, when it comes to the church community, um, and these are personal things that we've heard that we're trying to understand and, and get through, but, um, and I think this is more, comes more into the political framework, but people saying, hey, I don't wear a mask because um, I don't live in fear. God tells us not to live in fear, so I'm not going to wear a mask. But if you choose to live in fear, then wear Wear, wear a mask. And so, you know, for me personally, I'm not wearing a mask for myself. I'm wearing a mask really for other people. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's for the least of these. It's for those, right, who um, who might be effective and uh, affected in a negative way yep. if, you know, they get the virus. And so, to me, it's compassion. It's loving your neighbor. That's why I wear a mask. It's not this framework of, of fear. And I think perspective is so important. Whatever you have perspective on, whatever your perspective is, think about it. That will drive you in life. Absolutely. That will be the thing that drives you um, in life. And perspective has so much power and, and authority. I remember one time, I don't want to take this too, too far out of context and bring it back, but I, I saw an interview after 9-11, and this is just a quick narrative or point about how powerful perspective is. And they had some law, law enforcement talking about what they, about people who have performed attacks on 9-11 and they, and these law enforcement agents called them terrorists. Later on, they did some interviews with terrorists um, and the terrorists said, no, we're freedom fighters. Um, now, my point is not to side on with, with the terrorists. My point is how powerful perspective is. One person saw them as terrorists. Another person saw them as freedom, freedom fighters. Now, bridging that just a little bit into this conversation, yeah. when someone says you are living out of fear and God doesn't want you to live out of fear. No, no, that's your perspective, but that doesn't mean that's true. That's right. Because for us, it's I'm wearing a mask, you're wearing a mask, um, our team are wearing masks, my family is because of compassion for others, that's right? right. Yep. Out of humility, out of love for the, for the least of these. So framework is so important. Um, I've heard pastors and people from churches say, when we gather on May 31st, so in a few weeks, I'm willing to get arrested for this. And again, are we so convicted by this or have this deep conviction that we're ready for this? Um, this is the battle we're going to choose. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, and then one of the, the last things is people saying, uh, you know, there's this separation between church and state, um, two last things, between church and state. And I would say, yes, I get that. But at the same time, let's look at the things the, the state has helped us on. I know there's some churches that the the local or the state or the, or the um, federal government, thank you, has helped nonprofits keep their doors open or keep functioning by giving them loans. They don't have to repay. The government did that, right? That's right. Um, at the same time, I don't think a lot of people know this, but the churches were deemed as essential. So when we're saying, we're holding up signs saying, hey, the, the church is essential. I agree. Jesus is essential. But let's look at what the government has done. Not only helped nonprofits and churches giving them loans that they don't have to pay back potentially, but also... Um, there was a document that the CDC released, and here's all the essential functions or jobs that people can go to. One of those on that list was churches, that we can gather with 10 people in order to do this, in order to go virtual, That's right. digital, That's right. and have services online. The government came up with that. So, you know, they've done two incredible things for houses of faith, for churches so yeah. far. So they have said that we're were essential. And I would say that right now, um, some churches are saying, well, the church is closed. The church isn't closed at all. The, the buildings that are made up of brick or stucco, yep. um, yes, 
Our campuses are closed, but in no way are our churches closed. We're still active and vibrant. We're seeing people come to Jesus. The church is not closed, but I think maybe we've been taught to think in this binary way, like there's one way we can only gather in a, a campus. Yeah. When if you go back to the, the New Testament, um, man, they were a non-mobile uh, culture. They didn't have cars to go places. They gathered in homes. That's what the church was. And so, you know, if we really want, I think, a biblical point of view, it's like, we're doing what kind of the New Testament church did, but more of a virtual digital version. We're gathering in homes. Some of our small groups are gathering, yep. you know, wearing masks, you know, and being six feet apart, but still, still gathering. And so with all of that, that's some of their reactions. And it's not us or them. There's no sides in this. But that's some of the reactions we're hearing from the pastoral church community and reactions we're hearing from our local community. So, so here's some of our reactions or our guiding thoughts. We want to start with a scripture, I think, inter interesting enough that we haven't heard at all come out. Um, yeah. But this for us was very important. So this is, we're not going to put it up on the screen, um, but this is uh, 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 13. I'll probably go three or four verses. It says this, it's talking about being um, in submission to authority. And submission, what Peter means here, is like a submarine, being below, putting yourself below authority. And so that's what submission means, to actually lower yourself. That's not an easy thing to do. No. You actually have to think about that, react intentionally to that, purposeful, and put yourself in that position. But that's what Peter's talking about here. Verse 13, he says, be subject for whose sake, the Lord's sake, to every human institution, whether it be the emperor. And crazy enough that this is like 62, 64 AD, I believe. And he's probably talking about, about Emperor Nero. Now, we're not going to go into that, but look that up later if you don't know who Nero is. Because this, this is revolutionary what Peter's saying to this Jesus community and this Jesus people. So be subject um, to every human institution, whether it be Nero as supreme, verse 14, or to the governors as sent by God to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God. This is it right here. That by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. And there's some commands in here. Live as free people who are free, right? That's a big thing for our community. Yep. Be free people, right? No religion, no rules, right? Be free people who are free. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. And then verse 17, listen to this. Listen to these four commands. Love or honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the emperor. And so when we read that, you know, in this context, they didn't have the right to vote. This was not a democracy. They didn't have a government that, you know, helped, you know, deem them as essential so they can gather didn't have a government that gave them money maybe to keep their doors open or to continue yeah. paying staff. Um, this is a context of you have this occupation of, you know, people really who Peter's writing to who are living as refugees, right? Living, that's yeah. one of Tom Petty's songs, by the way. Oh, man. I believe. Um, but people who are living as, as refugees in a land that Peter refers to as Babylon, that this is not our place, this is not our world, right? We don't belong here, we're aliens, um, and we're just sojourners. We're passing through. But even with that, it'd be so easy, though, just to go, hey, we're going to get out of here, we're aliens, this isn't our home, we're waiting for heaven, I'm going to respond however I want to authority. But Peter's saying, no, be subject to every That's single good. human institution, and and the biggest reason why you need to submit yourself, the reason you need to be humble and wise and discerning and intentionally put yourself in this submiss submissive posture is because it is the will of God. And so here's the big takeaway for us out of that. If we submit to God, the one who's above all, right? If we submit to God, the one who's above all, we feel like in this season, we must 
we must submit to our city, to our state, and to our federal government. Yep. That for us, we don't see any other way around that. that and and that's, that's for us. And so a couple things. Let me just read these. We don't need to play sides. We're not going to do that. It's not yep. a church is better than this church or that the government isn't good. We're not going to play sides. We're here to what Peter says. He says, do the will of God that by doing good, you will put to silence others. Right? He talks about living and having this good conduct among the world that is honorable. So when people see your good conduct, they, they, they look to you, right? And, and they understand who you are and it glorifies God. And so we're not going to play sides. Two, I think this is up to every pastor. Every pastor needs to make their own decision. That's right. They need to be in prayer about, well, what is God saying to that community? So for us, what is God saying to Newcom? How is God leading us? But we have zero authority and power over another church, and we're not going to play that. So um, we, we have this mindset that we don't feel like we need to be on this crusade no. to make other churches follow what we're doing. We have this, this, this mindset that, hey, it's up to every um, Jesus community for their pastors and their leadership to figure out um, through the, the prompting and the leading of God what is best for them? Is it to open up? Some are opening up this this Sunday. Is it May thirty first, or is it a different a different date? Yeah, it's interesting. So you you would say uh, drawing from that First Peter passage that um, our uh, freedoms, our political freedoms, shouldn't <clears throat> govern our witness. So our witness is more important. Right. than trying to claim back our freedoms that we feel like the government's given us or taken away from us. It's really hard not to lay American freedom as my chief perspective over biblical freedom. Yeah, it's which good is enough. that, you know, Jesus has saved the soul. The soul is what witnesses. The soul is what reaches people. The soul, a changed soul, a changed heart, a changed mind, a renewed mind, that's what the witness is. And that's how we win the respect of the outsiders, as it says in scripture as well. Live a quiet life. Work yeah. with your hands. Win the respect of the outsiders so they will point glory back to the one who deserves it. And it's it's a really tough line to walk. But for us, that's what we feel like God is saying to us right now yeah. is that our witness is more important. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think bottom line for us is that, you know, there's been these orders on a city level, state level, and then federal level, you know, not to reopen at this time our physical buildings, right? That's so right. the simple question That's is, what we're talking about, do yeah. you comply or do you not? And if you, if either way, if you comply, if you go with it, or, or if you don't comply with it, what is, for Jesus communities, what are you basing that decision off? And so is our conviction so strong that we're going to say, we're going to defy the government, which is being thrown out all over headlines. We're going to defy the government yes. and we're not um, going to listen to them and we're going to open um, sooner than later. And so I think the biggest question maybe for me in that is we need to understand our motives. Motives are so so powerful, just like perspective is. Yeah, that's right. We have to understand our motives, both in why would we reopen or why would we not reopen? And I think our motives drive everything. What is actually motivating that decision? So for the sake of time, um, we're almost over, but let's go to just talking about the second piece for us, which is the reopening, right? So how do we get back to the, kind of our definition of this is how do we kind of just get back to neutral? That's how do we get back to kind of the, the surface of the water, not this emerging or re-emerging? So um, one, we have a tentative and future plan um, of what it's going to look like when we reopen, the question is, when are we going to reopen? And so um, we've been looking at both Vista, Oceanside, other cities in North County, and we are, you know, very excited right now to see how things are progressing in this direction of opening the, the church. Um, so things are going in that direction, but we don't want to rush into that. And there's a few reasons why. So we don't want to rush into just reopening the church. Um, and here's three reasons why. Number one, we believe that Newcom has never closed. 
yeah. right? We can't say it's enough, but we are not the building. The church is not the building. The church is, is the people. And so we have this inreach that we've seen expand and also increase to people in our community, people in our nation, and also around the world with people. So, you know, yes, the building, the, the brick and the stucco is absolutely closed. The church? Dude, not even close. No. Not even close, right? It's vibrant. It's active. So that's one. Two, we will open when we feel like it's the right time. And when we say we, we're talking about what we receive from the Holy Spirit. That prompting, yep. right? Petitioning, prayer, that. And so we've been very closely in our, our leadership, our staff, looking at what's happening at a city level, state level, level, federal government level. We've been watching it since day one. And so um, we will continue to look at that and base our, you know, our decision regarding our opening off what they are saying. And so um, there's no rush to get back on, on a Sunday um, because we don't want to have a negative effect on the well-being of people. Yeah, there's a responsibility there. Yeah. Three, real quick. Um, when we gather on campus again, we want to do it so it's safe, mm -hmm. it's effective, and it's an excellent Experience. So here's just some realities. I don't know how many of you actually, we sit down and think about, well, what does it look like, the reality of getting back? Here's a couple reopening realities. Um, when you get back here, you're not going to be able to hug people right away, high five. We have a high five culture here. You can't do that right away. You have to stay a minimum of six feet apart. So as much as you want and we want, and yes, there's a need, and, and we are so excited to get back to this place to gather for the sake of gathering together, yeah. you're not going to be able to rush back in and run up to people and hug them and high five them. You're going to have a mask on. Yeah. You're going to have to be six feet away. There's not going to be any high fives or, or hugs. Communion might not be able to happen as much as we, you know, disinfect, you know, communion cups or, you know, things that, you know, can these prepackaged uh, cracker and, and grape juice cups that you can purchase, even those, those have to be clean on the outside. And then you're putting your hand to your face. These are just some realities. Giving, we cannot pass a basket around. And then think about this one. Children's ministry will be so difficult to do because there's no way you can tell children, you throw all these kids in a room, like, hey, stay six feet apart. Yeah. They're not great at, at being um, at social distancing, right? It's, yeah. it's not, it's not going to happen. And so let me be clear. When it comes to our second piece, which is reopening, um, right now, right now, for the month of May, we see ourselves continuing in our vibrant and our active online expression okay. through Virch, through... Um, chapel sessions, um, online trainings, those types of things. So we're going to continue doing that. Um, but hear this. You all know the season has been very fluid. So as we say that, things can change, right? We can hear from the government and say, hey, you guys can open on May 31st. You can open next week. And then we will look at that and we will, we will adapt. We will change to our current plan. Um, let's talk about the funnel piece, um, which is then re-emerging. Yeah. So just real quick, if you want to take that, but for us, again, we don't just want to get, our goal is not just to get back to normal. Yeah. Our goal is not just to get back in the building. Um, our goal is to go beyond that. We believe that God has an incredible mission, yeah. that there's an incredible vision that we've only seen because of this current season of the past nine weeks. And I believe God is calling us to step into something that we didn't see before as a church. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't see it before, yeah. right? So this is that metamorphosis piece. It doesn't mean that we're leaving behind our old expressions. No. It means that they're built into us, but um, how they look in a post you know, pandemic age, if you will, are, are going to be um, different. And God's speaking those things into our hearts, but he's also unfolding some of that as we go week to week in the yeah. ways that we're doing church. So um, you should be praying for faith 
in that, um, that God's going to do something that's not just going back to normal, but something that's going to continue to be transformational. Yeah, and I love that because, again, our mindset and be with us on this. Be excited about this because the the goal and the mindset isn't just to go back to normal. It's to move forward. And I, I love I love what you just said. It's not just to be normal. It's to be transformational, right? That's that right. not just as individuals, but to be transformational as a community. Listen, we've seen that people, obviously, we know this. People are in need of Jesus. We believe that yep. deeply as a church. That's our biggest thing is to yep. see people come to Jesus and have influence in the 760. And that's what we're talking about. We believe Jesus is calling us to go deeper into the community, have a presence so people can see us, right? That's right. Not to be hidden when we're gathering, not to be hidden when we're doing baptisms and worship and teaching, but to be present in the community. Yeah. So those, right, who um, don't know Jesus right now, uh, can come face to face with the living God. And that's, that's what we're about. So what this season has shown us is that Newcom can't just reopen, but it can reemerge in new ways. Yep. And we're going to build upon that vision. We're going to build upon that momentum and be excited about that, that there's this new opportunity, there's this new territory for us. And so, hey, this Sunday with that, talking about this reemerging and transformation and this momentum and this new territory, we are going to start a new series. I'm excited about this. Yeah. Um, this Sunday, and we're going to talk about uh, for a few weeks how do we um, steward the this disruption, and so how do we take this past nine weeks and how do we actually use it for momentum? Because all through Scripture, there is these disruptions, sometimes by God, sometimes by the world, but the community of of God's people almost always use them as a way to see how God was leading them mm-hmm. into new things, yep. the new thing that God had for them, the new things he was doing. So we're going to talk about how to steward the disruption in our life into what God is doing new in our life. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that because God uses all things. And so whether the origin of the oppression is from the world of man and the flesh, yeah. or it comes through a season in the desert from God the Father, um, all of them are meant to be stewarded because we are a spiritual people. So getting on board with what God's saying in the midst of it, um, kind of downshifting. I think we've shared most yeah. of what we're going to shift. I just kind of want to land in a place for two minutes um, because it could be easy to get caught up in this information. Uh, and if that information we just shared doesn't sit on on a foundation for you personally, individually, um, then your vision could be at risk of being foggy yeah. and your mind as well and your heart may be um, hardened by other things that you've heard and seen. And as I prayed through this morning, I felt like there was, um, it's so pastoral, I'm sorry, but just three things. <laughs> just three just three more things. Just three more that stuck out to me. And it's so pastoral, too, that we said 30 minutes and we're at 38, so. Yeah, well, and I'm the one that's at 38, <laughs> true to form. Um, but here's the thing. Um, for us personally, in regard to, to movement um, and moving forward, I don't want to move. We don't want to be a community. I don't want to be an individual that moves unless I feel like I have a sense from God yeah. that he's moved in my heart first. That's good. And, um, and I believe that that's how God works. Sometimes he calls us to faith um, and that's a move inside of the heart. I don't realize what I'm stepping out into, but I'm still going to trust God. God has to move in us first before we move on the outside uh, first. And that means that despite all the cultural noise, um, which in many, may, in many ways will make us want to force an outcome, um, to when we reemerge, when we gather again, um, we're going to listen beyond that for God's timing and purpose, not just at our immediate desire for timing to speed up um, some of those other responses. So we're not going to move unless God's calling us. And um, we sing these in our songs, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Like, what does that really mean in regard to our faith? And so the second thing is faith. So I just want to encourage you and maybe expand some territory if you haven't thought about this it this way or maybe you need to be reminded that it equally takes faith to move 
and also to be still. So equal faith, to move and also to be still. Um, and we have to fight the urge to only define faith as taking ground mm. and or only define faith as claiming our religious freedoms back, whichever those things good, are. Man. That's a hard temptation yeah. to fight right now. Yeah. There's so much more that, than we can ask, think, or imagine that God wants to do. And faith is what opens the door for God to do what only he can do. And if I'm trying to take ground and only defining faith that way, I might be missing out personally. And two statements, waiting isn't weakness. Waiting takes faith. Faith. It's not weakness. Waiting is not pacifism. Hmm. Waiting is active watchfulness. It's important. And, you know, if, if you're called to wait, God's calling you to wait for his purpose, um, which means your purpose is going to have to kind of get worn out and broken down, and that's part of the purpose. So, you know, first was in regard to movement. We don't move unless God says to faith, takes equal faith to move as it does to be still. And then last is lean not. You know, somehow in the midst of this, we have to lean not on our own understanding. And in all of our ways, we have to figure out how to acknowledge him, trusting that what it says literally is that he will make your hmm. path straight. And, and, and it's a if then, you know, if you can lean not, if you can acknowledge in all your ways, then he will make the path straight. It's very literal. We need to focus on what our biblical mandate is as a primary. And yeah. we submit beyond all authority to the one who's over every authority entirely. And that's a way that we lean not on our own ways. Um, so we have to govern our motives, our responses, and make sure that it's not based on our understanding, our own interpretation, but on what he says is the way, truth, and life. And that leads to, leads to freedom. That'll be freedom for you to hear from God, to let go, to shed some of the wind and the waves and the noise of culture, to hear and be planted back in the things of Jesus. Hey, it's so good to be uh, with you. I know some of you are watching this live. I can't see who's on right now, but um, um, some of you will watch this as as a, a replay as well. Hey, thank you for being a part. This is the meeting we were going to have today. So yeah. thank you for being right there, part being a team. part of the team, part of this conversation, and you know, coming into our our meeting that we were going to have for 30 minutes or 42 minutes today. 42. So. Um, Hey, may the presence of God be with you yeah. um, in your heart, in your mind, in your home, and be led by him. And um, feel free if you have, we don't want to get into long discussions about this via email, but if you have thoughts yeah. or things that you want to connect with us on, Derek at sdchurch.com, please email me, or Justin at sdchurch.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and Newcom, uh, we will see you probably tomorrow for uh, chapel sessions, right? Yeah, you will see us. We won't see you. We will see you. Yeah. Hey, have a great Tuesday. A lot of stuff to think about. We love you guys. Bye-bye.